Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and welcome back to the Recon NG series or course and uh, I know I haven't been uploading for a while. I've been actually recording the other series and it's time to get this one out of the way. So uh, I will be uh, looking to complete this series and uh, what's remaining is completing the entire scan, uh, showing you how to perform an entire scan on a target and then finally generating results. Now, of course, uh, after this series, we'll be moving on to the next series, which is going to be the exploit development with Metasploit and then I'm going to be going through uh, all the assembly language etc 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 so that being said uh, let's get started so we're going to be getting started with uh, the first stage of um, of running a complete scan so we'll be looking at adding domains from the beginning so hopefully this will encapsulate everything that we've learned so far and also uh, i'll be showing you how data will be represented and of course we'll be looking at uh, performing a, a bit more of an advanced scan so the structure is uh, we're going to be looking at how to get contacts so pocs I uh, will be then looking at how to enumerate subdomains uh, either by using the uh, search data or by using brute force uh, brute forcing against the uh, the website uh, similar to what uh, burp suite or zap will give you uh, so you can find the subdomains that are hidden or subdomains that could have beta content etc etc we'll be then looking at uh, geolocations and ip addresses how to you know mark locations to certain ip addresses and then finally, we'll be looking at service fin fingerprinting, essentially uh, the process of uh, finding out what systems uh, or operating systems are, are the web servers running, for example. OK, so in this video, hopefully I want to cover POCs and subdomains uh, and obviously look at a few more modules. Uh, then finally, in the next videos, we'll be looking at geolocations, IP addresses, and then after that, service fingerprinting. And then finally, we'll we, uh, conclude this series with uh, generating reports. That being said, let's get started. So I've already generated, I've already created my workspace, a new workspace, which is workspace, workspace one right here. And as you can see, uh, I have not added anything in it. So we're going to be starting fresh. So I would recommend that you do the same. Now I've been thinking about what target I'm going to be using because obviously I don't want to disclose a lot of information in regards to them. So I've decided just to use Microsoft.com as the domain, all right, just as a as a means of demonstrating how a scan can be performed. Now, of case, uh, of course, in your case, you might be performing this on a uh, on your target or your employer, uh, whoever that may be. And uh, the structure will still remain uh, as the, as the following. All right. So let's start off with adding the domain. So show um, we can actually where we've actually show domain. So add domains and I'm going to add Microsoft.com uh, like so. There we are. Fantastic. All right. So uh, now if I hit domain, uh, we can see that we've only added one. Now you can add more domains if your uh, if your target or your employer has more. All right. So in this case, we're just going to use Microsoft.com. Now, what do we need to do? We need to generate uh, or we need to find out the POCs, uh, the essentially the uh, the domain contacts. Uh, and then from this, we can then use those emails to find out whether they've been pwned, whether they've been compromised in any way. And, you know, just get information in regards to who those email addresses belong to. But now let's try and use the who is we've used this module in the first videos. So POCS, uh, the point of contacts. And now we can just hit run. You can show the info if you want to, if you want to specify any type of information here. Uh, the source is still going to remain the same. If you have more than one domains, it's going to run the scan on both of the domains. All right. So I'm just going to hit run and let's see. Uh, what contacts uh, we can get here. So I know for Microsoft, we're going to have a lot of contacts. So I'm just going to let it run for a while because I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't want to get all of them because uh, as I said, for, again, for Microsoft, there will be almost more than, I think more than 500. So we'll just get a few more and then uh, I'll show you how the, uh, the contacts are enumerated in the database. Okay, so uh, let's just let it run for a, a further five more seconds. So five... Uh, four three two and one so i'll hit control plus c to stop that scan and as you can see we've got uh 50 total and 28 new all right so uh essentially what i can do now is hit show and i can show uh, show contacts all right so show contacts that will show the uh, the gathered contacts all right awesome so you can see uh, that they all belong to the Microsoft domain right here. And, uh, you can see that it, it shows you, it shows you the row ID, the first name, middle name, uh, country and the module that we're using. So first name, Chris, 
uh, you can see the location is um, the country is United States uh, the module that we're using and then it carries on and the row ID is as as added right here so if you wanted to remove a contact from this database you can as we looked at in the previous video the last name here is Adland and you have the email the title which as you can see is a who is contact so if you wanted to gather more emails more specific emails you can use another module if you want and then finally you have the region all right so looking at the region now or sorry uh, looking at gathering some more information uh, remember so now i've gathered these emails and now you can do whatever you want with these emails remember this is the information gathering stage now we uh, we need to move on to subdomains all right so let me clear this and let me go back here all right so we have cleared the subdomains uh let's go back i mean we've cleared the contacts now let's go back and uh, now when it comes down to adding subdomains uh, one of my favorite uh, modules that we can use is uh, the Bing uh, domains, uh, which essentially it's a data source that allows us to use, um, it allows us to essentially enumerate the, the known subdomains. So uh, domains and sorry, underscore web. All right. And I'm going to hit enter. Whoops. For some reason that is incorrect. Uh, Bing domains. Uh, is it Bing domains? I'm not too sure. Is it Bing domain? Uh, web let me see if that yes that is correct all right so now we can show the info but we only have one domain as of right now so if you see if i just show you that show domains we only have one so if we just hit run this will generate the subdomains that belong the fully uh, known ones that belong to microsoft.com all right so let that complete the scan and again, if you see that this uh, this message here is going to say sleeping to avoid lockout, this means that it's going to perform a scan, then stop to avoid uh, you being detected by the uh, the privacy or the protection uh, protocols or, you know, the, the protection features in place. Uh, all right. So as you can see, it's gathered quite a few and I'll also show you how to enumerate uh, the subdomains that you are able to get. All right. So. Uh, this will take a while, so um, I'm going to pause the video here and I'll get back to you when it is done, all right? All right, uh, so the scan is complete and as you can see, we have 32 total uh, new hosts found. So what uh, you might be wondering is how do I enumerate, how do I show these hosts that were found? So you can do that by typing in show hosts. Now, before I do that, let me just clear the terminal. So show uh, because they are going to be stored in the show, uh, in the hosts uh, table in the database. So show hosts. And if I type that in, voila, you can see that uh, they all gathered with the module Bing domain web and you have the subdomains here. Awesome. So from this, you can then obviously perform more penetration tests on these subdomains and test their stability, whether or not, you know, uh, what a standard web app uh, penetration tester would do. All right, so this is very valuable information. Um, now, let's look at how to brute force. Now, this is also something that many people have been talking about, you know, performing uh, th these searches with data sources that are, are, you know, that will just enumerate domains that we already know exist. You want to look for the ones that are hidden. All right, so to do that, we would use the brute hosts. Um, and let me just go back and we can use that now. So we use the brute, uh, brute hosts all right and this is going to use a word list uh when i say word list a word list that contains possible subdomains that could contain interesting stuff like you know beta a beta page that could have uh, a lot of vulnerabilities you get the idea so brute hosts and now we can use the show info to just show uh, any of the information that you might want to change uh, when i talk about that i'm talking about the word list you can use the derb buster uh, which is also a tool that I'll be talking about, the Derb Buster, that, um, the Derb Buster word list. So, uh, if I just open up a new terminal here, uh, cd, um, actually, yeah, cd user share, whoops, sorry about that, share word lists, uh, nope, sorry, uh, nope, I don't want to show all, uh, word lists and uh, if we just look at the the current one you can use the derb buster this is a very good one as well most of you use it uh, when you're you performing uh, information gathering uh, in regards to uh, finding subdomains so you can use any of these ones here the one i usually like using is sorry about that 
uh, let me just drag that out. The one I like using is the directory list small, which is probably the most effective for me. So you can use that if you want to, but I'm going to be using the normal one, which is the one that it comes with recon ng data uh, host names.txt. All right, so I'm going to just hit run and this is going to take a while because it is going to perform a brute. And as you can see, it's going to go through all of them and uh, it'll mark the ones that it found with the green notification right there. So again, I'm going to pause the video here and I'll get back to you when it's done. All right, so that scan is complete and uh, we are back and we were able to get 714 now. So you can see that the brute does work again. So now what you need to do is we can just say uh, show, uh, sorry about that, show, and we can say show hosts right here. And it's going to display all of them with the module that was used. Now, you can see that some very interesting information was able to be found and that is the IP addresses. Now, the IP addresses is something we'll be focusing on in the next video because I wanted to cover basic reconnaissance of the domain and the targets. Uh, IP addresses can carry a lot of information, as you know, so it's very interesting to see what we can do. The only type of information that we haven't got yet is the country. Now, of course, the country doesn't make sense here because these are subdomains, but you can look at all of these ones here that, that it was able to gather and you can see demo.microsoft.com. These are all interesting directory. Uh, dot microsoft.com so again it, it was able to use the module uh, that allows you to brute force against the current ones that you can find in that word list and again you can find more depending on the word list that you use uh, that being said you can use whatever one you want now uh, to conclude the video let's look at one of the modules that we have used which is uh, if i just go back here and i clear this that is the interesting files, all right? So this will allow us to find files that are hidden or that uh, files that the web developer does not want us to find. So the robots.txt, et cetera, et cetera. So the module there is called use uh, interesting, uh, sorry, interesting and files, all right? So use interesting files and now we can show the info, but because we only have one domain, we don't need to change anything right here. Uh, again, if you're, if the port is configured differently, you can change that as well. And that can be done really, really easily by setting set port similar to what you have with Metasploit. Okay. So we just hit run and uh, we're going to let this run now. Now, hopefully this one will run fast and I don't have to pause the video. Uh, but in regards to whatever it's found, it's will going, it's going to give you the green notification bar right here when it finds, uh, information that is useful. Uh, that being said, it's going to give you your status codes. As you can see here, the status code 404, meaning a uh, file is not found on server. Now, again, it's going to run it through the, uh, through different subdomains that it was able to find. So again, this is something that's going to take a while to complete. So I'll pause the video here and I'll get back to you when this is complete. All right, so the scan was running for quite a while and I didn't want it to complete because again, it's going to run it uh, against all of those 700 domains that we did find. So as you can see, we've got one here that belongs to the technet.microsoft.com um, robots.txt file was found. And as uh, again, as I said, it, uh, the great thing about this module is it sorts the, uh, the, the server status codes, uh, right here. So we have a 301. So if you don't know, the 301 is redirection. Uh, the 400, um, the 400 status code is for client error. 500 is server error. And the 100 is an informational type of status code. All right. So again, that's also very valuable information in regards to how the pages are being handled when you request for them. And you can go through all of the hidden or interesting files that you're able to find. All right. So uh, in this video, I've covered a lot in regards to performing a scan in a structured way. So if I was to go back here and I was to just analyze the information that we've gathered. All right. So the first piece of information that we've gathered is the contacts. All right. So the contacts right now only POCS. We have not gathered emails that belong to, uh, well, how would I say this? Um, emails that belong to the employees. These are just emails that are publicly available in regards to who is information. Okay. And you can see it's sorted out in terms of uh, their location as well, which is very, very good. You have their first name, middle name and last name as well. Uh, we then were able to get the hosts uh, or subdomains as whoops, show, um, whoops, sorry about that guys hosts right here. And that will, uh, that we were able to get the subdomains about 579 of them. So they were all gathered with IP addresses, some with IP addresses and the other ones, uh, without IP addresses, but 
in all regards we were able to gather a lot of subdomains and again this will all be dependent on your target or your employer's website uh, that being said that's going to be it for this video in the next video we'll be winding up with uh, ip addresses and geolocation data and then finally we'll be looking at generating a report or displaying the results that we were able to gather that being said that's going to be it for this video if you like this video or found value in it please leave a like down below if you have any questions or suggestions let me know in the comment section on my social networks or on the forum section on my website uh, that's going to be it for this video guys and i'll be seeing you in the next video